Okay guys, welcome back to the channel and to our brand new mini series on the best training aids available in golf. Looking forward to this one. Yeah, I love too. a training aid. <laughs> <laughs> you and I like a training aid I more mean, than like, most. <laughs> I'll make no apologies. I love a training aid. Yeah. Today we are going to focus on maybe fair to say this is our favorite. We both have yeah. the smart ball. We both have one. I've had it for ages. Yeah. Um, wedge work, mm -hmm. kind of syncing up work, sequencing work. Definitely. Uh, for something so simple, I mean, it, it is amazing how much of a difference it makes. Yeah, it, it really, really is. My first kind of uh, exposure to this type of a drill was actually Martin Keimer had, um, he had like a, a lanyard sort of, you know, round yep. his neck with a tennis ball on it. Oh, really? A tennis ball of all things. <laughs> and his arms were, he was trying to get his arms that tight. I remember seeing it, it was like, I don't know, it was like seven, eight years ago or something yeah. like that. And he had it and he's, he's kind of really trying to sync up his swing and, and that type of thing. And then, then obviously I saw this came out and, um, and other people were using little kind of like soft balls. and Yeah, I've seen that. That type of There's thing. There's also shaped balls that have pockets there. Yeah, I used to I, I, I used have one, to of, those have those one too. of those too. Yeah. yeah, well the thing, and that's the thing, people are always like, well, can't you just use like a dodge bar or something? The lanyard is, is useful because yeah. at some point in the swing, it is okay for it to come out. Yeah. And so I think as Absolutely. a system, it's adjustable because depending on how much it's inflated, mm -hmm. if my arms are a little further apart than yours or vice versa, yep. I can adjust it. Can. So I mean, as a simple item, it, it is pretty versatile. It really, really yeah. is. And obviously, you know, we like it and that sort of thing, but much more powerful than yeah. you and I, I know. is Rory McIlroy, is Rose. Justin Rose, yeah. um, you know, Darren Clark, you look all over the LPGA yeah. Tour. I mean, there will be, you know, 15, 20 players on a weekly basis just working on their swings and, and working on their move with, with the uh, smart ball on a weekly basis on tour. So let's chat a little bit about the benefits, Matty, the player who may benefit from this. And, yeah. and, uh, and it's not a one trick pony, the not smart ball. It's not something that you need to have just for one part of your game. You can have it in there for short game, pitching three quarter wedges. I love using this for little three quarter wedges. That's where I started with it also is I think I've been no stranger to feeling quite disjointed yep. in terms of arms getting a little ahead of the, the chest, getting over rotated from yeah. the chest and then catching back up yep. to the rest of my body. It's sort of just in, in many ways is forcing you to keep these two things in sync. For sure. And I also find it really keeps you from getting a little flying elbow going, yeah. which I've, I've used to, I mean, it's not like it's gone, but I'm just getting a better handle on it. That's sure. a big one for me is that motion. Yeah. You can't do it if you retain the ball between your elbows. One of the things you'll see commonly um, for, for the top players is their ability to keep their trail arm in front yes. of the rib cage, yep. keeping it in that position. You know, when that, that right arm or if the right-handed golfer gets deep, then that can lead to all sorts of steepening of the shaft. It can lead to loss of angles. I've, I've struggled with that probably up until the last month. Yep. I've really struggled with that exact same motion. And I was always concerned, well, if I lose that big width, yeah. Well, I lose my swing speed, blah, blah, blah. And then I think last week when we were in Mississauga, I, mm -hmm. I actually found like I could keep everything in a nice spot here yeah. and then use better ground force, better rotation to produce the same 100%. speed I had before. I was relying on that as like a power source, yeah. but it's a, it's a consistency like killer, yeah. I think. And, and it is a power source to a degree. You're absolutely right. And, and you, know, you could probably feel that it was a power source, but I, I, I love how you've qualified that with there are other power sources that you found that you could use yes. and not have to use that as, as a leverage point. All right, well, let's, let's hit a few and, and maybe we can demonstrate uh, you know, how, how you know, people will use sure. it and, and that type of thing. Let's, let's throw some little three quarter wedges in there to start and then we'll ramp it up. Okay, so I've got a 50 degree wedge. I think this is a good one because when you start using this, the uh, mistake I made and everyone makes is trying to make full swings. Yeah and it's 10 times more difficult yep. when you actually finish the swing. So I'm pretty sure Martin says like nice little three quarter shots to so start. True. It's same with plane mate, wasn't it? It was exactly exa the same. And mix. I made the same, we all do this. I know, I like, oh, I'm gonna hit how it. is it with my driver? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the what? driver clip? And it is what it is, but as, as we learned, if you start with plane mate just doing this yeah. and work your way up, uh, it's just a, it's a way better process. And guys, really w one thing that, that we're talking about all these different kind of uh, you know, technicalities, 
The sequencing on your golf swing, this will create a better chain reaction to your sequence. Yes. You know, by, by doing these, these sorts of things. So by starting small, keeping the task manageable, you're going to have a higher degree of success from the get-go by awesome. starting with a very, very small swing. 100%. And, and that will start to filter into the rest of your game. And something Larry Chung used to say to, to you and I when we, we were first doing some swing stuff was, you know, I, we would make a change. I'd be like, do you want to see me do it with the driver? And he's like, no, because if we do this, it will work its It'll way into in. the driver. It'll, it will bleed in. It's your movement pattern. You're not going to have a unique movement pattern for every club. And that's the same thing with, with this. Juicy. Lovely. So this wedge, this distance, that's I'm basically nice. trying to make an arm. So my arm should get to parallel yep. as the top of the backswing and then swing through just to control distance. This is your little Rafleski wedge system. soft so I think what happens for me on these shots um, when I don't hit them well is I will feel that motion yeah arms will sometimes get ahead of me or other times I'll kind of feel like it gets a little behind me right. and I think that's just basic sinking issues yeah. just yeah. like what we talked about if your arms get ahead you're gonna hit the pulley one that may mm. kind of have a bit of slice spin on it yeah if your arms get behind you may just hit the straight up block face is open comes up short left for sure um, that's what I'm feeling even on that shot I know it was straight but the distance loss, I almost felt like I had to slow down at some point mm -hmm. to actually start the ball in line. Exactly right. Maybe demonstrate one if you can, Matty, where the arms do most of the leg work. Because that's yes. what I see a lot in the bay when we're doing our wedge fits. So let me try one that's a little more arms ahead, yep. kind of arms working too much Perfect. in the downswing. And I would expect to see a plethora of, of issues when you do that. Um, strike location on the face, contact Immediately on the Immediately that felt a little heavy. Yep. Um, I think you, people little, start to really struggle with that. So a little heavy, little pulled on that one yep. kind of thing. Yeah, like that's a shot that when I feel like I get disjointed, I hit that a lot. Yeah. So it wasn't handsy. the worst. Very handsy. Spin comes down a bit. It pulls. Yeah. Um, and on the golf course, like if you're, if you're aiming incorrectly to start with, I mean, 20 feet pulled is fine, but what if I'm aiming wrong and yeah. that, that shot can get away from me? It can get magnified very, very quickly. Yeah. Okay, so go, uh, let's, let's throw in the uh, smart ball yeah. then. Let's hit a few with it. So you immediately feel Dude. a ton of body rotation. I really, I got this way through that yeah. one. The thing I'm excited to see is when you, when you basically take those last two swings mm -hmm. and kind of almost side by side and look at them and, and just the sequence of them and, and kind of just how everything's moving so nicely through that. I mean, you're so connected. So automatic. Yeah. And it requires, I think the reason the ball is great is it doesn't require that much thought. Yeah. And I'm not saying you have to use the ball forever, mm -hmm. but if you've never felt what that feels like, how are you supposed to do it without the ball? Definitely. You have no idea. Absolutely. You have no reference point, I guess. Yeah, face control is immaculate with this. Really good. And that, and that wasn't even the best contact but I feel that it really managed that club face better. So there was a bad contact, one went to just under 13 feet, 13 whereas feet. the other one was just under 21 feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect example. Yeah, that's nice. And all pe people, you know, guys, go look, at, go look at the stats for the best players in the world. Go <laughs> look at what proximity means, um, you know, outside of 15 feet. It means you're not making that putt. Effectively, it does. I mean, you might make one in 15, yes. maybe, when you get into that, that region. If you're a really good putter, yeah. you might make two in 15, if you're yeah. really good. Best players in the world will be somewhere around, probably from 15 feet, they, they might be around 15 to 18 It's something like that. Something like it's that. not high, and it's that's the high. best players in the world. Yeah. they got yeah. a one in five chance of making that putt. Exactly. So when you get into the scoring zone, whether this is taking advantage of a great drive yep. or... Maybe you've put yourself in trouble and you're, you're trying to really you know, grind for, for that par. Mm -hmm. Getting that proximity as close as you possibly can is how you're going to drive that score down, getting get down into this five, eight feet, that sort of region. It's great for your confidence as well because you never feel like you're out the hole. Absolutely. If you have 90 yards and you think, I, I, I'm going to get this inside of 10 feet, I'm going to have a 50-50 chance of making it. Yeah. If it's 21 feet and you have a 12% chance of making it, yeah. that's tough. 
Now, this looks great. I mean, it's actually interesting for me to watch you because there's a couple little subtle things that look slightly different, but this is a testament to the work you've done with it. You actually look like you don't look all that different when, when you swing with it now. Fair enough, yeah. 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 No, I, um, I think it, when I first started using it, it would have been night and day. Yeah. Oh, I mean, night and day. If we think of the, first, the swings that when you were making when you first, when we first started doing, doing work on this sort of stuff, yeah. your swing was so long. Yeah. And, and there was so much of that kind of yeah, elbow was flying out. This would have been really difficult for you to, to do this. I didn't used to be able to actually make a swing with this past hip high. Yeah. And the and ball would just be out. gone. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. All right. One more, and then we'll yep. maybe a little longer club. Let's do that. It's just so much easier. Like, that's four really good shots. Really good. And that's probably inside 10, right? Yeah, I, I, you're absolutely right. It's probably the best thing you could have uh, mentioned is that proximity to hole is, it is no joke. If you yeah. think 21 feet versus eight feet is not that big of a deal, mm -hmm. you're just, you're flat out wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you're upping your chances of making par birdie from there by 30%. And if I look at that one, so that's went 87 carry, 88 total. So that one that went 21 feet in proximity. Yeah. It was actually better for distance control but you lost face control, so your proximity went 12, 12 feet further away because you lost Great the point. face. It wasn't, it wasn't your ability to, to hit the, the right distance, just your ability to, to manage the club face. And when you've, when you've kind of put smart ball in there, your management of the club face is, is, is so good. Look at those last four, the, the side angles, 0, 7, 0, 5, mm. 0, 7, 0, 1 versus 2, two and, and 4. four. And, you know, that's, the, that's the major difference here. Good point. Yeah, very good point. All right, let's 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 grab... Um, I got a seven iron, is that... Yeah, that's perfect. I think part of it is like when you get now into the seven iron, mm -hmm. it's really not a different motion than we were just making. Yeah. Like I might have been gripping up on that a little bit, but yeah. once you move up a bit, I think that you spend most of your time with that to begin yeah, with. Yeah, I think so, But yeah. if you're ready to hit seven iron, don't think mm -hmm. seven iron swing. It, there yeah. is no difference. You have to feel just as connected. Definitely. And I think you have to be not afraid to lose some distance in your drills. Definitely. Don't try to yeah. hit this. Like my stock seven That's iron is so 185. Important. Yeah. You put the green at 160. Like you're doing yourself a disservice if you put the green at 185 and leave them all short. You're like, this isn't working. That's, and then you'll just exactly start going, Exactly what people will do with yeah. this. That's exactly it. 20%, 10% off, something like I, that? I nothing wrong with it being, being as much as 20%. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that's nothing just... Nothing wrong with that. Let's see how far it goes. And we can always adjust. I mean, if this goes 150, we'll just move the green. Yeah. No, 160. On, 160 was 160 a good guess. On the nose. <laughs> <laughs> Literally flew 160. Uh, you know me well. Good. But it's just so interesting. Like I'm toe up right away. Like, yeah. all, these are two degrees flat. I'm two degrees toe up. That means I'm really making a good connected swing. Death. I know that. really manages the, the club face does not feel like it's turning over too early. If it's a little open there, I think if I felt I turn a little more, that'll yep. square that up. Exactly right. A little more rotation. Yeah. And don't try to square it up by flipping your hands nope. kind of thing. Nope. That's just turning a little yeah. bit better and that's going to go in. Oh. Yeah. I mean, just, it's crazy. Just changing your rates, you know, of speed and, and managing that. Obviously it's a much, it's a much longer and longer shot. So, you're going to have different forces being applied to it. So your, your arms and body are going to start to fight one another a little bit more yes. with this one versus the wedge where it's, you know, very controlled. But you, you feel that. You, wow. you felt it in that last one that the reason the face hung a little open is because your rotation wasn't quite as quick as it needed to be. Yes. As soon as you, you, you made that little adjustment, then obviously you know, we end up hitting the thing. Can, That's true. It's like those wedges, wasn't it? It's and that's exactly what that feels like. Four I just, feet. I felt like I was hitting 160 yard shots with a wedge. Yeah. So there's, there's a reason, this is actually, I'm really glad we did this, because it's, it's an eye opener again to mm -hmm. how much consistency is just wasted yeah. by being out of sequence. Mm -hmm. And if you can be in sequence and feel like a seven iron, you can hit, if I feel like I can hit a seven iron to 20 feet all day, yeah. it's a huge advantage. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I think this is the perfect way to start the mini series. I think this is, this is one that will benefit so many players. I just, in my mind, I'm, I've got so many swings going through my head where I just think if, if someone had this and could do some winter work, and honestly, you don't even need to be making swings into a net or a screen or anything like that. You can make yourself up a little mini club if you've got height-restricted ceilings. 
make yourself a little mini club or you know come to somewhere like us and like take a wedge cut it in half build up the grip and, and make a little small club you just need the motion you just need the motion to be able to you know work everything in sequence and uh, and improve that and it's going to have that that trickle effect through your game absolutely and, and if you or in a setup where you can only chip a foam ball into a net yeah. or hit half shots into a net, you're right. You're still benefiting huge. Don't think you need a winter practice. I mean, we're spoiled, obviously. Yeah. We have this yeah. all yeah. winter and all summer, but yeah. any motion using this is going to correct some of your sequencing issues. Okay, guys. Um, hopefully, a lot of you will have heard of the Smart Ball, those of you who haven't, and these issues resonate with you of, of the types of things, face control and sequencing of body rotation and the arm swing and matching all that up. And maybe you've had a lesson and your coach said that to you, but now you kind of get a chance to see what that means and the value placed on it. This is one that you, you guys should really be paying attention to. So hopefully this will uh, help with your winter practice for, for next year, coming into next season as a, a new, improved, better golfer. Love it. Excellent. Okay, guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.